looking at to work on today for STEM. And also I'm going to go through really quickly that list I made for you, what each person's role is and what they should be working on today. I got some of your materials back, some of them I have not yet. Some of your blueprints you turned in, but you didn't have them labeled. You didn't show me those spots of rotation. Okay, so you're going to have to get those back and make sure to make them uh, up to my expectation and for you to get a higher mark on that. Okay, Reese, I'm going to ask you to stop for a second and pay attention, okay? So let's go through the criteria again because I've seen some things, some models being made, but it's not meeting the criteria. Remember, if it doesn't meet the criteria, it's not necessarily a working prosthetic in our eyes, okay? So, first thing, it has to be the actual size of a hand. So we don't want something that's huge. We want something that's very small. We want it to be about the size of an average hand. Like Does it have to look like a hand? Not necessarily, okay? Must have five fingers or something that resembles fingers. Between one and five must have mobility. So does that mean all five have to move? No. No. It means at least one. Okay? At least one finger has to move. This is what I, a list I gave you the other day of what I want to see. Now, you should have four different roles. You should have four different roles. You should have your artist, your writer, your materials handler, and your presenter. All four of you are in charge of getting your task done. When you're done with your own task, you're helping with the other tasks that need to be completed. Okay? You guys all know what your role is, but you need to revisit this list and make sure that you're doing what you need to do. The artist should have the blueprint finalized, colored, labeled, places of rotation. If you don't have that done, I have some people up here, but you did not finish it. I can get that back to you. You can finish it up today. Second thing is your writer. Remember, the writer needs to have, and it has, it has to be more than a paragraph at this point. We need to know, what is the math involved? What is the science that went into it? What is uh, some background information we need to know about prosthetics? Remember, we intro this whole thing from that prosthetics Prezi. Go back to that. Go back in your notes. Absolutely take your folder and look through that again. Materials handler needs to take care of the poster or the construction of your model. If you're not doing a poster, then obviously you're working on your model, okay? Beginnings of your hand must be turned in. At this point, you should have your model pretty much set. We did a lot of trial and error, but at this point, you should really have an idea of what you're gonna do. Okay. There should be one on the All right, I'm walking around to see what you're working on today. Don't love you indeed. I don't need you to love Come on. No, come on. Murray. Hey, Moses, come on. Who's the secret Good morning, buongiorno. Welcome to Victory K-8 for the Gifted and Talented and Italian Immersion's second annual STEM Fest. Today you will have an opportunity to see some wonderful projects our students created around the area of prosthetics. They have spent weeks learning and researching, designing, and creating their prosthetic as a team. So welcome and enjoy our fest. Thank you. Hi, I'm Miss Malone, and I'm here today to talk about STEM at Victory Elementary School. Well, some of the things that we're doing here is we, we are putting on a STEM fair, and the way we just uh, divided our kids up, we have them in co cooperative groups where we have a writer, uh, artist, a material handler, and a presenter. 
each kid is responsible for their role and their part in the uh, designing of the STEM, where we combine the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So we have a prosthetic hand for eighth graders, and for seventh graders, we have the prosthetic foot. So we have different variations of the foot. We have the foot for an animal, we have the foot for an adult, and we also have the foot for an infant as well, young children. We also have um, some sample prosthetics that were uh, loaned to us by uh, different agencies. And so our kids are going to be putting on their presentation today. We're all excited. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Good morning, my name is Miss Hockey and I'm the 8th grade STEM teacher at Victory School. Um, this project that we did was STEM prosthetics. We worked on it for about almost two months and we saw the process of the kids learning kind of develop over time and it was amazing to see how engaged they got in the activities. Um, when we had to go through and kind of start, we started with the history and the kids had to do a lot of research. Um, we integrated with our writing and she was able to do research papers with them to help them uh, properly sort, uh, um, cite things. And um, we had our social studies teacher involved as well. She did the timelines with the kids. Ms. Malone and I did the math and the science behind everything. And it all kind of came together in the end and the kids really, really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I don't think they looked forward to it in the beginning because they didn't have a clear idea of what they wanted. But once we started doing some of that research and the kids started to think about ways that they could develop their hands, I think they, they got a lot more confident about it. And they came up with similar ideas, but they're all very different and unique in their own way. Um, it, it really happened organically, and that was the beauty of STEM, is that it can become anything you want it to be, and there's no real fine print that's going to tell you exactly the way to do it. So it's a beautiful process and the kids really enjoyed it, so I hope you do too. Alright, so what do we have here? Um, we have a leg based from like knee down. It was um, based off of my knee, or my leg. And um, this one is for an athlete and it's supposed to um, bounce so I'll let you run. And um, yeah, that's it. what else are I talking about? Um, well, what's it made of? This what's is it made out of cardboard and hot glue yeah. and paper. And um, this is also made out of cardboard and hot glue and paper. And it has tape on it. What are some of the problems you're having so far that you're trying to work out? Um, we were going to put a spring on here so it, um, it could bounce and you can actually run with it. Hi, my name is Shema. I'm the presenter of the group. Hi, my name is Adrian. I'm the artist. 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 All right, this is our prosthetic leg. Uh, we started by painting it. Deja had ordered um, a plastic one, a mannequin, and we. It was hard for us to put the screws through the plastic, so we had put a hot glue gun to melt the plastic to put it through. We had to cut some of the plastic off to make it bend, and we had put one of our socks on there to cover the plastic on the bottom because we didn't want to paint that far. And it's messed up because the people in the other class had messed it up. All right, we got a PowerPoint about our leg. It describes it and all that stuff. All right, the good thing is math is about it. Patients extend less energy walking with prosthetic legs than when walking with prosthetic legs and using crutches. A natural, a more natural appearance and more control over the area of the body with the missing limb apart. Prosthetics, the prosthetic devices are also offer a great quality of life for those who have have had amputations. The leg that we did, that we did was an infant prosthetic leg. The materials that we used, some of the materials we used was paint, paper, tape, um, a cup, and some cardboard. For we choose the baby prosthetic leg because for babies they can experience what it's like to have a, a prosthetic leg and instead of humans. And what inspired us to do um, a baby prosthetic leg was there was a lot of adult legs that we saw, but we figured there's not a lot of baby ones, so we figured we'd do one and be different. Hello, okay. my name is Dan. This is my name is Dan. My name is Robert. And we have our uh, prosthetic hands. You can pick up a ball. 
fingers on, and pull the strings to pick up the And it's able to pick up this is our blueprint, and then we I have our presentation, and then these are uh, how what are prosthetics and how we have uh, like amputations and how they're able to put on uh, people's legs, hands, eyes. This is the pros and cons of the prosthetic. What's our good and what's our bad? Like how the cost is for a con, or you're able to uh, be more athletic in some ways for uh, pros. This is a famous people with um, prosthetic. My name's Jackson. I'm a Okay, our prosthetic hand, um, our prosthetic hand is this right here. Um, our prosthetic hand is made out of cardboard, hot glue, string, and um, paint. Our, the paint that we use is light blue and black. Um, our criteria in order to build a prosthetic, we had to move at least at least one finger out of all five. Um, we have to be able to pick up a cush ball and be able to move it to a different location. Um, these are the um, pictures of prosthetics. See, so they look kind of realistic. They look robotic. Some of the math that we needed to, to know about the prosthetic hand in order for it to work and be able to grab something is we needed to know the angles and the measurements in order in order for us to know how we needed to know how long the finger was so we could make the correct measurement and to make the correct angle in order for it to grab like a 90 degree angle and a 180 degree angle. Some pros and cons of prosthetics. Um, a pro is being able to have that a movement and a missing body part that some people don't have. Um, another um, pro is having a, a boost of self esteem. You know, when you don't have a missing part or you don't feel like you don't you feel like you don't fit in sometimes. Um, some kinds about prosthetics is um, they cost a lot of money. Hello, uh, my name is Wynn Parkinson. I am uh, 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 I was a high school chemistry teacher for 35 years, and then I retired. I actually went back to back to work, and now I'm just subbing. And the reason I'm coming to you today is that I was born without a, a right foot, and as a result, I've worn an artificial limb my whole life. The original leg that I that I wore was just a stock of wood that they whittled away on until they got it to fit. I, once they got it close to being fitted, then I would go in for an all-day fitting, and it, I'd, they'd put the foot on, the braces, the straps, and I'd walk around and let them know where it was bothering me, and then they would whittle it out some more, bring it back, and we'd do that process for a whole day, probably uh, five, six, seven hours, whatever it took. And then once that was completed, then we would finish it up, and I'd... Uh, once it was finished, I had to go in. If there's any final adjustments, they'd make those, and then that was it. Now I'd be off with the legs.